do you enjoy freelancing compared to building your own game? Um, I much prefer freelancing actually because mm. I get to work on really interesting, weird projects. I, I've worked on stuff in the last two weeks that I didn't think of doing before. And what's really fun is that it's like I get to learn new stuff, add it to the portfolio, work on things that I would never do for myself. And there's also just the general, I don't know, there's, there's a sense of, of pride in working on stuff in these small bursts. And I just find I get more done. If it's yeah. for yourself, you can keep fopping yourself off and saying, oh, well, it's not important. It's only my project. But clients need it done, so you do it for the client. So I get more done if I'm doing contract work. Um, and on a, on a more holistic thing, it's, it's, a, it's, it's something that's, that's brought me some contention before by saying, but um, it's just harder to make money as a, as, a, as a game dev these days. Like you yeah. have to hit successfully. And realistically, I know it's, it's not, not very sexy to say, but like if I work on a system for a client, I can make between three and 30,000 for something. And that's like for somebody else, they have to go through two years of nebulous lack of no payment and just hoping that it works <laughs> out. And then it probably will like realistically cashing out, you'll, you'll maybe get a hundred thousand or 200,000 or something, and it'll probably cover your costs and you'll end up with a small buffer of, of value. But I don't want to be gambling for a year and a half and dealing with the stress of it. I'd rather yeah. just say, I'd rather get paid a lot of money for a small thing and then deal with my own stuff from that point on. So it just makes my life a lot easier. Yeah, and I, I almost, I view them kind of like really differently, like different career paths altogether. Because, you know, when you're when you're creating a game, you know, you're technically, you know, creating a business a franchise, you're you're taking all the risk, you're, you know, like, like Jason said, two years potentially, probably even more in some cases, to really get mm. from idea to, to, full implementation and deployment and and getting some sort of payback from it um but i will say though matt's got a good point i certainly don't want to i don't want to like sound like i'm down on the game thing like I, i'm not saying you don't have to make games but i'm right. saying i i treat the contracting as my job that's what yeah. pays my bills that's what keeps the lights on whatever free time i have i still work on my own stuff and that's cool and i can work on it and the the difference is my expectation for working on game stuff is that it's like buying a lottery ticket it might do really well and it might change my entire life i might get enough money to build my own studio somewhere and really like build up stuff if i wanted to go that way um but i'm not i'm not banking on it i didn't quit my job to make a game i didn't <laughs> i didn't like go all in on, on something like i i'm not saying you don't you have to like ignore games i'm just saying that realistically these days i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's a particularly smart move to without having proven yourself by working on other larger projects to just deciding to make a game studio or make games like i think it's a you're a braver man than i for doing that like i would i would rather have I'd right have enough salary brave. yeah <laughs> i'd rather have the salary and the thing about contracting which is if, if you work a nine-to-five job because i've done that before with a nine-to-five job you you don't have a lot of free time and you come home exhausted and you don't really feel like working on stuff. And so that's a bit whatever. But if you're doing contract work, it tends to be high bursts of time and high bursts of resources. So I would work for four months and earn like nine months worth of my income. And then I would have no work for six months. <laughs> no projects are happening. I've got nothing to do, but I have enough money in the bank that it's covered my time. So now I actually have the bandwidth to work on things like game projects. So contracting is actually a good complement to building your own projects, I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the, that's the interesting thing about contracting too is that you know you or freelancing is that yeah you, know, you might have a long dry period, but of course you know the jobs that you worked previously would have gotten you through that. So you know I I've always looked at it like oh that's so stressful because you just like you feel like you never know. <laughs> but at the same time, I mean working my day job, I mean Monday to Friday, and I I work more than forty hours a week. I am beholden to that. In the weekend, I'm mm. thinking about what am I like. My wife and I always kind of complain because it's like <laughs> Saturday is our day to just kind of l unplug completely. But then Sunday, I'm already thinking like, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna have the stand up at nine fifteen, so I got to figure out what am I gonna what am I gonna talk about? What are we gonna what what's the next week gonna bring? I, it's like you really only get one and a half days off, you know. <laughs> I I would take the six months with the stress. <laughs> than, than, than having it be so consistently tied up with work and like you know things like only speaking from personal experience as someone who has a day job and doesn't freelance um my side my side projects like my hobbies like infallible code this channel and any game that i would want to make is all pretty much on the back burner when i'm at work you know because that's my, my life is i need to focus on my day job because that's the thing that's sustaining me in life 
Um, and yeah, it's just, there's, there's so many ways to look at it. And then the full extreme of that is, oh, I'm going to be an indie game developer. I'm going to save up and then just quit my job and work on a game, you know, my dream project for the next two years and try to make that profitable is, yeah, it's, it's different ballparks. It feels like. And don't get me wrong. Like this is, this isn't, you don't have to play either one or the other all of the time. Like Mm. I'm, I think it's equally as viable if your actual goal is to be a full-time game dev and work on your own projects. Like there's no reason you can't start by doing contracting, right? earn enough to kind of make yourself comfortable to put out your first game and then use the, uh, the winnings <laughs> from your first game <laughs> to, to put it into your second project and then slowly pivot towards a full-time studio. Um, I just think that if, you're, if your options are try to work full-time on some nine-to-five job and do a game on the side, you're going to have a hard time. If it's going to be, I quit my job, I'm going to like go all in for a year and a half, you're going to have a hard time. Contracting is like the nice middle ground that lets you do a little bit of both and try to keep your sanity. Um, yeah. I, I just think it's, I just think, the, I think in this day and age too, with everyone working from home, people understand now why there's a lot of value in the whole controlling your own, um, your own sort of time and work. And I think the, I think a lot of companies post this apocalypse, if, it, if there is a post, um, <laughs> will will start pivoting in that direction because I think there's there's value all around for people to be. Contracting is, is no longer this like weird side gig. I think it's going to become a more. I guess YouTube's a good example of this. You know, self self promoted professionals who who do their own stuff, who do their own channels and their own content and find their own revenue streams. And I, I think that's becoming more and more of a viable gig these days. I don't think people see it as this weird thing anymore. Thank you to all of my patrons, and a special shout out to Jennifer Irwin, Christian, Urizer, Alwyn Kuravilla, Umit Sarin, Anton, Mighty Possum, Amar Duranovic, Dustin, Nav from Academy of Games, Usuf Ali Castle, Iron Alex, Trond, Dark Rush Photography, Glasswell Entertainment, and R Star. Thank you.